Hey everybody, it's Derek Horn from CodeOpinion.com, and there's a simple truth in software design. The same thing in the real world is often not the same thing in your system. And if you model it like it is, you're in for a world of pain. Let me illustrate with a bunch of examples. So let's use the concept of an employee in a system. So you can think of this data structure as that word sort of persisting about an employee. Regardless of how you're persisting it, just follow along here. So we have something like an employee ID, that's our identifier. And then we're persisting, we have things like the name, uh, my birthday, which is not really it, <laughs> banking information for payroll, um, your social insurance number, or social security number, email address, there's roles, things that I can do within the system. So that I'm an admin and I'm a developer. I have some two factors. So I have an authenticator or an SMS that I can use. And then various apps that I can use within our system like email, storage, and calendar. So when we think about this structure of an employee, is it really one thing? The answer is it depends, but that's really a cop-out answer unless I say it depends on what. And the what is the sheer size of the system and the capabilities it provides. If you have a small system so that's very focused, then it can be that structure, that model, probably. Is it a much larger system? Then maybe not. Before I jump into my first example that illustrates that the real world and your models are probably two different things, I'd like to thank Current for sponsoring this video. Current's an event native data platform that feeds real time business critical data with historical context in fine grained streams from origination to destination, enhancing data analytics and AI outcomes. For more on Current, check out the link in the description. The reality is in a large system, this isn't a single model. It's likely actually two or more, just I'm using my simple example here, is that we have first birthday, banking information, my sin, this is likely completely related to HR. This information would exist in some type of HR system. And then things like my email, my role, the 2FA apps, it's more IT focused on what permissions do I actually have. These are two very different concerns. Both are talking about the exact same employee in person, but they are totally two different concepts within our system different data, different responsibilities, different boundaries. Now you might be thinking this is total nonsense. You don't need to be splitting any of this up. I'm not doing microservices, but the reality of it is this has nothing to do with microservices and this could also apply to a monolith. But before I get to the reason why you might be wanting to consider splitting up these models, let me show you one more example first. If we have the concept of a customer within a system, we have different things like opportunities, invoices, payments, different interactions, tax IDs, and preferences. Is that really what our system is? Could be, or is it more likely like we have some CRM portion that may be in our system? Maybe it's not, maybe it's something external to us like Salesforce where we have our leads opportunities, those interactions, contact preferences, and then separately for in our system, maybe again, this is something separate where you have some accounting system where you're dealing with your invoice, your payments, and your tax IDs. Same customer in the real world, two very different customers in your system, including if part of your system is integrating with something external. So why are we even trying to split this up? What's wrong with just putting everything into a singular model? What's the big deal? The big deal is coupling. If you end up with a massive model or a massive schema that tries to capture everything, you're gonna end up with a lot of coupling. Coupling is inherently bad, but you need to manage it. So what ends up happening is we have, as our system grows over time, we have coupling everywhere because every part of the system needs to interact with that same underlying data model. We likely aren't even capturing behaviors. We really just turn into a big ball of mud. Anybody that's ever worked in a large system that has a high degree of coupling knows this pain. Make a change in one part of the system, what are you gonna break somewhere else? Can you even make that change? Do you even know what you're gonna affect? I make a change in CRM. How does that all of a sudden gonna affect accounting? I don't know. Another important distinction is the rate of change. Where you're actually making changes to your system is likely in the core, that's where you're iterating. The fringe supporting side is likely a little bit more static once it's been developed. You want autonomy in that core that you can make those changes without affecting other things and vice versa. You don't want to be able to, oh, we do finally need to make a change to some supporting role or su some supporting part of our system and that affects the core where our, really the business value is. No, not really. You want autonomy. Let's take the example of an order. You think you place an order online and this is how it works. You place your order, it gets packaged up, put onto a truck, and then that truck delivers it to you at your house, apartment, whatever the case may be. It's just that simple. 
An order is not a shipment, not even close. And you might suspect that. That's why I'm using this example. So you place your order and then maybe at some point that gets delivered to some intermediate spot, some type of warehouse, where separately a completely different vehicle, a different truck may pick up that package and then deliver it to you. You can expect this can get a heck of a lot more complicated where you have things like multiple deliveries, where your package is split across different locations especially in more commercial settings. So this can get way more complicated in terms of dropping stuff out of warehouse, multiple deliveries, split deliveries. It's not just an order, it's an order and a shipment. Now, if you treat an order and shipment as the exact same thing, you're gonna end up in a hot coupled mess that's very difficult to change. But hopefully you realize that with that example, it has no business being the same model. Is a patient in an EMR the same model? where it has things like medical records for diagnosis, treatments, prescriptions, the exact same boundary as where we have procedure codes, where our claims are in payments, likely not. In all of these examples, in the real world, these seem the same, but in our system, they're not. Why? Because our models are driven by capabilities, not purely by data. Our capabilities are what are persisting that data. Everything is driven by capabilities, not data alone, unless you're purely in a CRUD-based system. So for capabilities, if I go back to that first example of an employee, there's a pretty big difference between resetting a password and calculating the payroll for a pay period of that employee. Or think about the customer in our CRM, how we change their contact preferences, or how we charge their credit card. And hopefully the most obvious is the placing of an order or how you actually execute to ship that order in a large system a large system using one model to rule everything, to one model to rule them all, will ultimately lead to a high degree of coupling. A high degree of coupling is gonna make it harder to change. Now get in the comments, my favorite part, and I wanna read about some of your horror stories of these mega models that cause all kinds of pain. I'm assuming others will enjoy reading them too to realize not to go down the same path. Thanks to everybody that supports my channel. I really do appreciate it. If you do wanna support my channel, you can join the links in the description on how to join. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to get in the comments there. And please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.